population estimates are approaching 8 billion by 2020, creating the need for the 300 bushel acre. To reach that mark, producers will depend on seed genetics and high population twin row seeding. It's a land of uncharted yields, and it's possible with twin row from Great Plains. The crew gets the 12 grain barges properly positioned and lashed together in Pig's Eye Lake on the southern side of St. Paul, Minnesota. Captain Ryder tells us the crew is returning to the towboat after having been on vacation for 30 days. Last night they arrived from Paducah, Kentucky in St. Louis after a 12-hour drive. Several crew members grabbed a much-needed afternoon nap before setting sail this evening on the 670-mile trip to St. Louis that may take anywhere from 9 to 12 days. Pig's Eye Lake is the marshalling area for assembling the barges for the upper Mississippi River tows. Barges are filled upstream with grain from the huge Minneapolis grain elevators that are accessible only by truck or train. The barges are then brought down one or two at a time through two sets of locks at St. Anthony Falls. Ryder says last fall's late corn and soybean harvest had a dramatic impact on barge traffic. During the last month of 2009 Upper Mississippi River shipping season, he estimates the number of barges hauling grain to New Orleans dropped by 90% compared with previous years. The major season for moving grain south on the river is from September to early December. Later on our trip, we'll pass towboats on the river heading north without any barges. They're heading to St. Paul to move empty barges downriver for the winter shipping season. That's practically unheard of and very costly, Ryder says. He says the 195 foot long by 35 foot wide barges at first glance look all the same, but that isn't true. The barges have different front designs, called squares and rakes, and have to be properly positioned in the tow for efficient and safe movement on the river. Square-fronted barges are placed in the center area of a three-wide tow. Barges with rakes have rounded front corners on the bottom and are placed on the outside of the tow to more effectively deal with the ever-changing river current and high waves. The three out-front barges would normally have a square-front barge lashed between two rake-front barges. Today, more than 90 million tons of all types of materials move each year on four types of barges on the Upper Mississippi River. Grain, fertilizer, cement, and other materials move in covered dry cargo barges that offer protection from the weather. Open hopper barges transport bulky materials such as sand, gravel, or coal. Liquid cargo barges handle petroleum, liquid fertilizer oil, and molasses. Flat deck barges handle equipment, materials, or products that can be tied down and don't require any protection from the weather. For our particular tow, a dozen barges are lashed three abreast and stretch out 780 feet in front of the towboat. When we add three more barges two days later downstream at La Crosse, Wisconsin, the captain will have 975 feet of barges stretching out in front of the wheelhouse. As we get underway, Ryder explains there are 27 locks between Minneapolis and St. Louis the crew must navigate through. There can be no more than 15 barges in an upper Mississippi River tow. But since there are no locks between St. Louis and New Orleans, 25 or 30 grain barges are often lashed together in a tow in that part of the river. Most of the 27 locks drop 12 to 14 feet, says Ryder but the lock at Burlington, Iowa drops 53 feet. From Minneapolis to New Orleans, there's a 1,400 foot drop. 
Between Minneapolis and St. Louis, the river drops 350 feet. Most locks are 600 feet long, which means we have to break the toe in half to get through a lock, float half the barges through the gates, and then bring the remaining barges and towboat through the lock. Going south, the river current will float the first set of barges out of the locks. Heading north, the first set of barges are winched out of the locks. And as we'll soon see, it takes several hours to get through the locks, not counting any delays, during the busy summer months, a tow may wait 6 to 12 hours when pleasure boats, fishing boats, and numerous barge tows are waiting at the locks. These waits are expensive, as the typical tow boat burns 80 gallons of diesel fuel per hour. With 1,200-foot locks, it's a simple three-step process as shown in the following example as we're moving south on the river. After the tow enters the lock, the water level is dropped anywhere from 12 to 53 feet, and then the dozen or so barges and towboat exit the lock. This can be accomplished in 45 minutes. But this turns into a nine-step nightmare at the outdated two dozen or so locks that are only 600 feet in length. Once the tow boat enters the lock, the lashed together tow has to be manually broken apart by the crew. The tow boat and remaining barges are then backed out of the lock. The first set of barges is lowered as the water level in the lock is dropped, and the river's current is used to float the barges south through the lock, which are then secured to the southern break wall. Next, the lock's water level is raised, and the remaining barges and towboat move into the lock. Then the water level is lowered before the remaining barges and towboat can move out of the gates. Finally, the crew cables the dozen barges back together before the tow can move downriver as a single unit. This normally takes two or three hours. Building 1,200-foot-long locks would eliminate many costly delays. In fact, an Illinois Farm Bureau analysis indicates delays at locks cost Midwestern farmers $500 an hour in lost crop value. Since the cost to operate a towboat is approximately $9,000 per day, lock delays are estimated at $100 million a year. With 1,200-foot rather than 600-foot locks, 15 barge tows could breeze through the longer locks in 45 minutes, compared with the typical three hours when splitting the barges. It takes 30 minutes to split the barge in half and twice as long to reattach the cables to the tow. While it normally takes 20 days to go from Minneapolis to New Orleans, this time could be sliced in half with 1,200-foot locks. Ryder says only three of the 27 locks on the upper Mississippi River are 1,200 feet long, which means this tow will have to be broken in half for 88% of its lock passages. That means the crew will spend over three days of their time on this trip simply getting through the more than two dozen locks. So it's evident that if we're going to move twice as much grain to market 20 or 30 years from now, when 300 bushel corn and 100 bushel soybean yields represent the U.S. average, then we're going to have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to update the river's ancient system of locks that are operated by the U.S. Corps of Engineers. Next time on Shipping Out, the Mississippi River Transportation System earns a D minus grade.
population estimates are approaching 8 billion by 2020, creating the need for the 300 bushel acre. To reach that mark, producers will depend on seed genetics and high population twin row seeding. It's a land of uncharted yields, and it's possible with twin row from Great Plains.